thank you please hold someone by your left and by your right and together as a family of faith let's lift up our voices and pray in the spirit but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith the bible says pray in the holy ghost pray in the holy pray in the holy ghost abalakato sabrande ke para susia bahashi are you praying sabrande skalabrado jate brehese de bakatash It's another opportunity for fire, for grace. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One last prayer father give me an encounter tonight please cry from the depth of your heart give me an encounter show me something i have not seen before open my eyes to see something i have not seen before let my ears hear something i have not heard before grant me clarity grant me illumination Aparato shala branda ke baruto su. for your power for illumination for insight for wisdom we bless you and we acknowledge you even tonight do mighty things in our midst let there be impartations let there be transformation let there be all kinds of encounters at the instance of your word we thank you we bless you we honor you for in jesus name i pray 
Good evening. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to have everyone around again. It's always, always a blessing for me. Every time I have the opportunity to bring the word of God, you will think because I've been doing this for long, I should be used to it. It is always fresh, always new. My passion remains on fire and I always long for the times when we share together in his presence. Just a few things and then we'll get to the word. Um, number one, uh, please listen everyone inside and online. Um, I want to encourage us particularly over the issue of testimonies. Now, truthfully speaking, we have seen the hand of God in remarkable ways. Uh, my, my phone is full of hundreds of remarkable testimonies. Um, and I got to find out that the challenge for many people is the system that allows them to come and share. There are so many people who would like to share their testimonies, some seated here, some online, but it seems like there's been a bit of difficulty and I just want to simplify the process. It's pretty straightforward. We have our testimonies, please listen. Our testimonies are handled officially by the media department. They have their email address for those who are outside of this environment and not localized. And you can always, you are at liberty any time of the week to post your testimony and just grant permission that it be shared. And there will always be a way of collating them together. I think that there should be, um, there should be, okay, the, the official number is there. That's the media line. Please, everyone, you can have it down and let as many people. There should be an email to please project an email that they will officially This is because we believe in testimonies. We really do. Testimonies are more than just a manifestation of the anointing upon a man. It is how people know that God is at work in a place. Testimonies are very important, vitally important. It's important that people know that not only that God is alive, but that he's at work bringing glory to the name of his son, Jesus. The Bible says, and it was noised abroad. The things that Jesus did, it's important. And I want to challenge everyone here as we continually experience the hand of God, the prophecies that come, the, the spiritual truths that are communicated alongside the manifestations that follow from our obedience. It's important we make it a culture. Now, please don't get into that psychological trap of feeling guilty for coming every week to share your testimony. Of course, provided everyone generally has a testimony, but we would just like to appreciate testimonies that would consider notable. And the reason is because we want to challenge the faith of the listeners. Are we together? While it is not, it is not um, too small a reason to come up and say, thank God that I'm alive. I think that... Um, it's, it's a testimony that would consider general, not to demean it, but then uh, we would want to hear testimonies of the mighty hand of God so that the faith of someone can be encouraged. Listen, you would see people sitting across like this and see everyone smiling uh, until you discuss with them the problems that they are sitting on and trusting God for a miracle. So, so they need to know that God is at work. So please make it a culture and... Um, be your brother's keeper on this wise. Do well to encourage your people. Some people are just shy. They are really very timid. Could be for sociological reasons. But let me tell you, this is a home that is opened and loves everyone with no prejudice, with no discrimination whatsoever. If you cannot speak English, speak Hausa. If you cannot speak Hausa, speak your language will find someone to interpret there should be no pressure whatsoever this is the house of god it's not a police station it's not a prison cell it's not um, any paramilitary platform this is where god's people should find expression within 
the jurisdiction of the word of god so i just want to encourage everyone please media find a way of promoting this that i've said online so that the our family both here and diaspora will know that we are interested in knowing what god is doing and and frankly speaking the list of the reasons is that which has to do with you know what god is doing through the man of god the most important thing jesus said and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men testimonies are publicity strategies it is important nobody wants to waste his time in a church a place where nothing works um, human beings are not that free people have serious things to do with their lives and their destinies and they need to be encouraged they need to be motivated that their time in god's presence will be a time that is worthwhile the lord will bless us in the name of jesus amen and amen um the second is concerning our teachings now we remain grateful to god in this house for the remarkable literally without exaggeration the remarkable testimonies that come from the teachings god has anointed these teachings it's more than the person who has communicated these truths the teachings work because the spiritual content in the messages are true they are not opinions it's dangerous to teach opinions our lives are too short too small and too limited to create doctrines out of our experiences and so we teach the word of god the principles of the kingdom and those who believe and apply the truths that follow inevitably will return with testimonies and so do not leave the distribution of the teachings to just the media the pr and so on and so forth i think for me one of the greatest um ways you can bless anyone that is cheap and affordable more than getting clothes and all of that is to just grant them access to these truths there's almost a teaching on every major subject matter find somewhere find someone who is hurting in an area find where there is ignorance find where there is oppression find where there's limitation and just help to be a bridge even with these teachings it's something that must be intentional are we together believers must be trained and mentored to know that these is not just a way of promoting a man's agenda is your contribution towards kingdom advance while you are struggling to know what you are called to do while you are still flogging it out with destiny <coughs> excuse me what what have you called me to do oh lord you can start from there are we together praise the lord um the third is that um, because of the overwhelming need uh public relations department uh, they have communicated the fact that um, people call all over and the lines we have are limited and so we have decided to at least add one more official line for the pr please if you can get it to the media let's project it if we have it so that the people can have it down so add it please um the official lines of this ministry for correspondence and all of that is handled by our public relations department so please do well to have it down so that you can help those who um, would want to reach the ministry many times it may be difficult for me to respond to everybody the way we want um, but then our lines are open almost all day almost all week um, so you can take advantage of that praise the lord the last function and then we'll get to the word of god mark chapter 16 we'll read 17 and 18. part of the apostolic and the prophetic is to be able to understand times and seasons and to guide the body of christ um, again i've seen in the realm of the spirit the onslaught of the manifestation of the spirit of death i've seen the spirit of death and the spirit of infirmity and and this this is a plot you know death 
there are times that death can come over people but there are times that death can come over territories it's not necessarily looking for a particular person anybody that comes under the influence of that spirit will go for it are we together um, so there are three things that we want to address and then we'll get to the word number one is death number two very strange afflictions and infirmities someone will just complain my head my stomach my leg and the person is gone this is how you know that a thing is demonic and then number three although it may not have come to our region but the bible says to pray for the peace jerusalem this act of kidnapping people they just steal a human being now it's not only properties that are taken you know and this is not just an issue of terrorists again it's becoming a lucrative industry and so any even friends steal themselves are we together yes they connive with touts and pick up people and um, demand for all kinds of all kinds of uh, 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 what do we call it ransom you know very ungodly amounts that they call and then eventually they subject the people some people are raped some people are, are harmed the psychology and all of that uh, it's important for us to fortify our spiritual borders and then as part of the larger family body speak i told you that bodies only execute what the realm of the spirit concludes upon are we together if your hand steals something told your hand to steal the hand does not have a will on its own the body without a spirit is dead so everybody who is being inspired to do this there is an ideology that is spiritual in origin are we together uh, and some of these things come as a result of the laziness of people this is why we continue to challenge people to be productive no productive person will sit down and begin to look at the options kidnapping someone is proof of how you have disbelieved your own destiny that means you have concluded that on your own wisdom cannot work for you favor cannot work for you relationships cannot work for you and you settle uh, for kidnapping people mark 16 17 and 18 the bible says there are signs that should follow believers and it says in my name they shall cast out devils number two they shall speak with new tongues let's read verse 18 it says they shall take up serpents and if that means they don't intentionally go and drink but if for any reason they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them then they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover but the tragedy is in psalm 74 and verse 9 please give us psalm 74 and verse 9 read with me please we see not our signs there are signs that the bible says should be seen and the complaint now is that we see not our signs there is no more any prophets the correct rendition is is there no more prophet it's a question and then it says is there not any among us that know it how long that means we do not see the things that the bible says should be seen and where are the advocates is there no prophet is there no representative to tell us how long to define the limits are we together part of the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic is not in titles habakkuk said i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower that i will see what the lord should say that means it is within the power of the holy spirit given to men to command darkness and say thus far have you come and no further shall you go are we together please rise up on your feet do not be like esther when her man was plotting the death of the jews word went to esther and she was careless and mordecai said do not think that because we are outside of the gates when they are done with us paraphrasing they will come back to you in one minute i'd like you to stand as a priest that you are 
and decree and declare these tripartite spirits we banish first from our spiritual atmosphere and then out of Kaduna state and this nation number one the spirit of death please pray number one the spirit of death Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? And to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Cause the spirit of death. Number two, take authority over strange infirmities infirmities with no medical history demonic oppressions over people number three take authority over the wicked spirit of kidnapping and all kinds of activities of terrorists in the name of jesus we command we decree and we declare we stand as watchmen and we declare our territory sanitized from these operations from these afflictions in the name of jesus Pray for your family. Pray for your loved ones. Hallelujah. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. We banish the operation of death first from this family. Second from this city third from this state yes. and fourth from this nation yes. you are a spirit you are not an occurrence we call you by your name and we banish your operation yes. in the name of Jesus Christ yes. number two strange afflictions in the name Shabakatos Kebrakata Shkelebarakatos Ebreketeka Parousia in the name that is above all names any planting in your body that is not of the Christ I curse it now by the God of heaven number three we pray this one is not us we speak to the elements of the earth. We speak to the elements of the supernatural. We command the earth and every element of the supernatural that any man... See, listen, let me teach you something. You see, the earth is a universal point of contact. Everyone touches the earth. The terrorist who wants to kill another person now is on earth. His feet is touching the earth. And you can use the earth and speak. In the name of Jesus, we speak by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the activity of kidnappers and terrorists within this region and around stop now. Stop now. The Bible says that he frustrates the tokens of liars. He makes diviners mad so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. And if there is anyone, whether your loved ones or whoever, that is under the siege of kidnappers, we declare their unconditional release in the name of Jesus Christ. These are some of the ways, it's more than terrorism. It's also how the spirit of poverty works. When you carry five or ten million and give to rescue someone, what if that's your life savings? Very demonic operations. 
Zaria will speak to you. This is our domain. In the name of Jesus, we draw a line across these spiritual borders. And we declare it sanctified in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that any activity that is not the Christ, sponsored by the spirit we banish its continuity in the name of jesus please be seated god bless you you see please understand this the believer is not a cause to creation the believer is not is not is not a nuisance to civilization the believer is not a luggage that our sociology is trying to manage no the ideology that we have been given is an ideology that transforms it does not destroy are we together so it's important that that we continue to emphasize believers please more than knowing who we are we must obtain grace from God to be the light and to be salt. Not to sit down and hope things change. Not to sit down and be careless and say it does not concern me. You see, God has worked with us way past the issue of denominations and personal doctrinal affiliations and all of that. We are, we are, we are members of his body. What happens to one happens to all. It's an ideology that we must carry. It's an ideology we must sustain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to do that. Very quickly, we'll get to the business of the night. The keys of the kingdom. We're on a revision series for some of you who are just coming. So many people we honor and we welcome and we truly bless you tonight. Let's get to the word of God the keys of the kingdom this is part two we're on a revision series um the way that god trains us in this place is very intentional it's very meticulous very defined the the exegesis of scripture here is not just meant to be part of the things that happen in a service but by the grace of god there is a portrait there is there is a picture of what God seeks that we become. Praise the Lord. And as we strive by the guidance of his spirit and through the spirit of wisdom, we continue to bring teachings that are spiritual in context, that are balanced, life applicable, and are transforming again. And um, every once in a while, before we get into another level god would grant us grace to do um somewhat of a revision that means to go back and look at the things that we have learned by the spirit correct the gray areas because you see nobody leaves what works nobody leaves what works and if our christian lives um if it continues to be unfruitful we will be frustrated the Bible says, herein is our Father glorified, John 15 and verse 8, that ye bear much fruit. Not just fruit, much fruit. It says, so shall ye be my disciples. This will be proof that I mentored you. Your results will show that I mentored you. Are we together? Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. We started off last week. Jesus was speaking about the keys of the kingdom. And I started just a quick recap how that there is only one key to the kingdom. One key to the kingdom. And that key is not an object, is the person Christ. Christ being the door, the authorized entrance point. We observed last week that um, there are not only doors, there are also windows. There are other illegitimate routes into a house. But the authorized channel to any house is called the door. If a visitor jumps through your window, he's not welcome, although he's in your house. Are we together? So Jesus said, I am the door. Jesus never said, I am the window. I am the door. There is only one key to the kingdom. The Christ, the door. 
but when you get into the life of the kingdom through the experience that we call new birth then the kingdom functions by keys a key is a symbol for access access so the keys of the kingdom are the truths that grants the believers access to function effectively to be in experience a true representation of the image the character of the christ and to manifest the possibilities that are in this kingdom and um the keys of the kingdom are the access points that activate and deactivate possibilities the faith life is a compendium of infinite possibilities that means there is no end to how far there is no end to the potentials that are contained in this faith life my life and your life no matter how yielded cannot exhaust all the possibilities that are contained in the christ and so our life should become an like like an explorer's life we continue to explore different dimensions of the possibilities contained in the christ i said something last week that i would like to say before we take off from there the word of god is very important in helping believers know god and in helping believers become effective and the word of god is important because it defines the boundaries of god's commitment to man please you have to understand this god is not indefinitely committed to man there's no record in scripture that allows for god to be committed to you anyhow he's committed by predefined conditions and that condition is encapsulated in the word it's important to know this now his compassion can respond to any issue of your life but it takes the word of god to define how far his hand can come towards you it's very very important compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of a man's infirmity but he has exalted his word the bible says above his name i say this because many times believers think that god is committed to them and we continue to quote a lot of wise sayings trado african approaches and we believe that it will it will draw sympathy and because god is love he will respond but then you will never see results until you bring yourself in alignment to the word of god and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation this is very very important the word of god defines the boundaries of god's commitment the word of god shows how far he can help you any provision that the word of god does not allow cannot be accessed by the saints so it is important that believers don't learn and know the word of god just as an option if you want to be spiritual then take the word seriously if you don't want to be spiritual you can roam around the things of god no there is no victory outside of the word the word of god is the testament is god's commitment is his vow the word of god is a definition of how far the terms and conditions it's important that we know the word there's no place in scripture where the bible records that satan comes to steal prayer no he can stop prayer but he cannot steal prayer but if that seed is sown the parable of the sower the seed is the word of god and satan cometh immediately not a demon he comes himself and he steals the word are we together very very important so we have to pay attention to the word right we began to show the sequence of spiritual growth last week how that it matters for us to understand the sequence of spiritual growth when a believer encounters new birth what next what is the next assignment listen there are many frustrated believers today because of the religion of following christ now take note of my choice of words the religion that means that there is no life and no power there is no intent and no goal why do i have to serve god are we together so when believers get born again there's no motivation for spiritual growth 
there is no motivation for increase at best their motivation may be a desire to be like their pastor meaning to go into ministry and this is not a very proper way of mentoring believers because the vicissitudes of life itself is they are distracting there are too many things in life to distract a believer you must be able to have a road map that guides if i get born again where do i go from here and why the average believer after responding come please after responding to an altar call honestly does not know what he should do again and he would have to subscribe to the ideology that is predominant within the territory where he got saved now it looks very simple but sometimes it can be very poisonous because it matters who talks to you about god and it matters what you are told it matters the jurisdiction of the spiritual information that is supplied you you can hate god because he was wrongly proposed you can have imbalance in your spiritual life because some well-meaning but maybe ignorant person communicated a dimension of christ in a lopsided way and i told us again and i've shared it here in this house that how we grow matters not just that we grow now think with me for instance that this gentleman just got born again and the next topic he hears is love and marriage or financial prosperity as powerful as it is this guy is already in trouble you see there, there is a foundation of truth that he should be taught to make the issue of marriage or the issue of finance make sense you see that now if this guy has not been taught things like how to deal with the flesh conformity to the image of the christ you know how to rise beyond the vicissitudes of this life that life of surrender the prosperity is going to destroy this man he will have the money because the principles work but it will be at the expense of his soul but the bible says to prosper even as your soul prospers that means while you are prospering in other areas there has to be a check if you find out your soul is not prospering then you need to vet the system you are following if it's god's system you will prosper even as your soul prospers hallelujah when a believer gets born again this is the sequence or gets saved the next assignment of this believer is to be introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit remember jesus from john 15 john 16 in fact john 14 he began to talk about the ministry of the holy spirit that he was on his way going but the comforter the comforter whom the father will send in my name the gospel of john he began to introduce us to the holy spirit when he gets to chapter 16 he says i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth so you see his assignment he will guide you into all truth that means you have to be guided truth is not on the ground and you just pick anywhere you have to be guided and that is in the office of the holy spirit as a distinct personality of the godhead to guide believers into all truth studying scripture without his guidance will lead to error imbalance and religion when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth he will show you the things that will come he will take up what is mine and give it to you are we together so this man is introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit and that encounter with the holy spirit first begins to open his organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit because the bible says that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit number two the bible says that the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit he cannot receive because they are spiritually discerned are we together no matter how illiterate no matter how educated no matter how enlightened the moment you want to start that spirit work you have to subscribe to the ministry of the holy spirit it is very very important if you do not subscribe to the ministry of the holy spirit you will you will walk with god purely based on intellect or based on 
the sociological context of life and all of these things are within the three-dimensional realm you will not be able to walk with the holy spirit and walk with god outside of this realm if you're together please say amen, amen. you can mechanically pick the bible and just begin to read like any atheist would just read to know about the christian faith but this book that you see has to be opened by the spirit Isaiah 29 and verse 11. It's a popular scripture here. Please give it to us. Isaiah 29 and verse 11. Read with me. It's projected. Please. One, two, read. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot, for it is what? notice it didn't say it is closed it is sealed so you can open it and yet it is sealed next verse 12 and the book is delivered unto him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i am not learned you see there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned come together and depend on the holy spirit this is very important because the ways of God are not the ways of man. The methodologies of the kingdom sometimes are very ego stinging and insulting. And until you become spiritual by your submitting to the Holy Spirit, you will not be effective in your spirit work. That was why Naaman refused to wash. He was angry. He was embarrassed. What kind of nonsense is this? You brought me to embarrass me before a prophet the prophet did not even come out to even honor me is it that he's not aware that i am naman the captain of the syrian army and the little lady encouraged him and said look um if he had told you to do another thing that is worse wouldn't you do it and the man humbled himself watched seven times in a very dirty river and then came out clean the ways of god alas master for it was missing they where they met with prophet elisha was very very straight narrow and they went to a greater place and while they were felling the trees the axe head fell you would expect that he would say who can swim so that we'll get it quickly but th that was already a hopeless situation scientifically he said where fell it and he took a stick threw it there and all of a sudden it came back the prophets began to eat and they shouted there's death in the pot and he took flour and sprinkled on it and said go ahead and eat it's been cleansed so the, the ways of god are a mystery you have to understand a serpent comes and is buffeting the people and then a brazen serpent is lifted and they are told to just look at it that whoever would not look at that serpent will be a victim of this one very very powerful the ways of god in God's economy, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Are you seeing that now? Yes. So it takes being spiritual to really, really become a kingdom person. Now I began to share with us a few keys of the kingdom. We'll continue from there. Bless God. Number one, we looked at two last week. Number one was the concept of starting and prioritizing God. God only, God first, God above all. And we explored the first three words of Genesis or first four words of Genesis 1 verse 1. I'm just doing a quick recap. The Bible says in Genesis 1 verse 1, the first four words, in the beginning, God. The beginning of everything must be god you do not ask god to come and patch your life you don't create your agenda create your plans and ask god to endorse it uh -uh. he's alpha omega not chronos omega god will not join you on the way he has to start are we together the bible does not call him chronos you don't call him to join the bandwagon of your will and your intentions he's alpha and omega and so we challenged ourselves that it's important that in this kingdom those who excel in this kingdom are those who must exalt god and his purposes above their desires above their intentions i want it this way 
but I acknowledge the fact that when God becomes above everything, he protects, he preserves. Two, we spoke about the concept of success, tying it with the law of the mind. It's very important that transformation is important in this kingdom. In this kingdom, we reign by light, we reign by knowledge, and that knowledge comes through transformation. Transformation through renewal and enlightenment. Take note. Transformation happens through renewal and enlightenment. Renewal because there are old ideas that are there that may not be consistent with the ways of Christ. Not everything in your mind is dangerous. Not everything in your mind is wrong. But when you come to Christ, the Holy Spirit, Adam, before his fall, did not need renewal. There was no need for renewal. Are we together? The content in his mind and his understanding came directly from God. Satan began to sow a seed of an information. When Jesus came, the Bible says, um, God now came walking in the cool of the day. Adam, where art thou? He said, I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. And he said, who told you? That means you have captured in your mind an information that did not come from me. Who told you? Who told you? You have banked an information that is a seed that will grow. Are we together? Yes. I hope you know that it is not only God that is the sower of the word. It is not only Satan too sows. Remember in the parable of the wheat and the tears. While men slept, an enemy, whoever that enemy is, we know he's a farmer too because he sows. So you can wake up with ideas you did not sleep with. You can wake up with a harvest you did not remember sowing. This is why transformation is powerful. You look at a little child, a little baby that looks very helpless in the hands of the mother and give the child one or two years, the child will begin to pronounce words and you are wondering where it's coming from. The baby will wind his or her hand and give the mother a slap and while the mother is crying, the baby is laughing. Where did that come from? Certainly not from the womb, but where, for God's sake, did that come from? When has the child associated cry with joy? Are we together now? So you see the kind of world that we live in. He said, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. And then the way life works ensures that you remain um, a sinner in many ways the anger from the boss man I mean what he would do someone depriving you of your right and you know all of there are too many things within 24 hours that can destroy your understanding and then the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 1 and 2 I beseech thee brethren it's not a sermon it's a plea by the mercies of God that he offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of service. Verse 2 says, and do not be conformed. Here it is. Do not be conformed to this world. Is the Greek word aeon. The thinking pattern. The system of operation that comes with this cosmos. It says, but be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. And that by that you will be able to prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. There was a mindset, there was a thinking, there was a body of conviction that made Jesus that flawless when he was on earth. And he's saying allow. The word let there means allow. Allow this body of beliefs. Allow these belief systems to also be enshrined in your understanding. Very important. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. The Bible says having their understanding darkened. Then it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their mind. When your understanding is darkened, you are alienated from the potential, the experience of the life of God. It says through the ignorance that is in them. Transformation is very important. There is almost no hope for an effective Christian life for any believer who ignores transformation. And it's important because Africa is a very superstitious continent and in Nigeria where people who are very spiritual 
we would we would opt for wise sayings we would opt for a mix of trado african christian approaches and would not settle down for the word of god that is balanced truthful intelligent and transforming and this lopsidedness continues to produce the different qualities and the versions of christians that we have and all those species will all be credited to the wisdom of god and it's not entirely so because there is a species of man that god cannot produce so when you see that kind of man you know that there was a corruption somewhere hallelujah praise the lord the mind is very powerful i taught us about success that true success in the kingdom is not something that we do true success is what you attract by who you become this is very powerful there are so many people who continue to labor effortlessly to do things financially spiritually they want to do things and there is a place of doing there is a place of action but action is only relevant when there is transformation success is what you attract by who you become there is a level of transformation you get to that cannot allow a certain level of life to remain it's impossible Are we together you cannot see papa Ia deboe for instance at a restaurant trying to buy rice and fish his transformation does not allow him to have that kind of physical experience somebody will be called you will think it's because he's an elderly father of faith and you want to honor him but someone will stand up and say sir please go back home give me the honor of cooking to bring for you because his level of transformation rejects that physical result are you seeing how life works you don't say i hate poverty you are transformed to an extent that it becomes unfair to remain at that level so this is a mistake that believers continue to make we try to do things and the things we do are higher than who we are so the results continue to boomerang and bring us back to our levels our mindsets success is a product of growth it's more than doing things God can tell you you're going to have 5,000 members, but you have to grow. It's more than just prophecy. There are ethics that you honor at every level of growth. And as you continue to transit, your results continue to change to reflect the change in you. As you change, your clothes will change. As you change, your honor will change. As you change, your communication, your understanding, as it's changing, your relationships will change everything continues to change to reflect the changing person you don't go and look for friends you attract them by your growth are we together you don't go around hand picking people this is the this is the labor that god saved us from through transformation look how painful it is to go and select friends how do you know the person will not change tomorrow allow the wisdom of god to select them your assignment is to grow does not deep call on to deep when you grow it begins to change you cannot be wealthy and have poor friends it's not about driving them the law edits itself it edits your possibilities the moment there is that transition your one room starts pushing you out without an intention to leave you don't have to say i must i'm tired of this place no that's not wise grow there is a level to which you grow your one room will push you out and the laws of god will back your exit they remained in egypt until moses started bringing an information moses said thus said the god of the hebrews your 430 years is exhausted he didn't preach in one day they kept hearing it while they started believing an exodus there was there was the, no matter how bound they were they were forced out of the place listen it is frustrating this is why a fake life and oh dear god bless and help our generation gathering physical things that are not reflected in your growth is a waste of time it was authorized to live and it must live there is no power in existence that can keep it with you 
If I bless you with one million, your mind and your mind has not grown to that level. Your mind will interpret that one million as an attack and will fight its exit until it returns to the value that reflects your growth. It's not the issue of a spirit of, of, of uh, poverty. No. Satan is an opportunist. When he comes, he looks at a man's mental construction and uses it to build the strategy. Satan does not come to a man with a default strategy. His strategy is bespoke. It's made to your mindset. He will study your mindset from it, study your vulnerability, and carve out a strategy from it to bring you down. Satan cometh to me, but did not find anything. Satan comes to men and check where is darkness? What gives me license? What gives me access? If your prayer life is on fire, he can't attack your prayer life. He will check your understanding of the word of God. They are called rulers of darkness. Their domain is when there is ignorance. Are we together? Mm. The law of the mind. When I learned this law, it changed my life. I knew that there had to be an easy way. It's difficult to give God glory the way many people seek success. Your assignment is to grow. When you grow from the intelligence of that growth, you will be guided on what to do circumspectly. The Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. And it says the way you walk circumspectly is by applying time redemption strategies to your life redeem time you don't redeem time by refusing to walk in time time is automatic but that your life becomes circumspect when you take pathways that have time redemption advantages on them like following the path of favor like following the path of mercy like following the path of growth rather than seeking things when you seek things and get them in five years and then by the sixth year it leaves you that's time wastage but when you grow in two years and attract what stays for life that's time redemption so the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise say i'm growing the third spiritual law we're doing a revision thank you jesus halus kabratuskia the law of faith let's run to the laws and see how many we can touch the law of faith numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 please numbers 23 and verse 19 read with me it's projected one to read god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent hath he said and shall he not do it or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good the law of faith is a very powerful law. The Bible declares again and again in this kingdom, I'm doing a revision, that the just, the believer, one who has been justified in Christ, that you will live by faith. The only assurance of your victory, the only assurance of tomorrow, the assurance of success is faith. There is no earthly guarantee given to any man, not by any uncle, not by any auntie, not by any certificate, not by any platform. The authorized platform of confidence for the believer is faith. And this is the victory that overcome, even at faith. Are we together? What is faith? Faith is your conviction, your conviction, your conviction. The name given to your conviction about God and the integrity of his person and the corresponding action that is taken to honor that conviction is called faith. Faith is not some laborious doctrine to explore in and out. It's as simple as that. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able. He has an ability and I know him. I'm persuaded. Are we together? Very important. Come, Sheun. Look at this, please. Now, if I look at Sheun now and I say, Sheun, I'm going to give you 1,000 naira. The first thing he's going to do is to draw from his understanding of who he thinks I am. My ability, my integrity, everything comes under pressure at the instance of that word. 
he would have to verify whether number one i have the integrity and the willingness to give him a thousand naira and then number two whether i have the ability i may have the willingness the integrity but not have the ability so god allowed his word so we can vet him he's not afraid of being vetted god is saying probe me probe my integrity i've worked with people under any condition through different dispensations so that your conclusion on reading this is that god is not a man that he should lie are we together now it's not something you just believe he tells you go through it i allow you to have this the chronicles of my integrity so that you will believe me when i say i can lift a man from a dunghill and sit him with princes vet it did i not raise joseph did i not raise esther ah it's powerful to believe god there are people in ministry waiting for uncle or auntie to hold some ceremony and to assure them of some support system. Um, there will be one building that you'll be using and will be giving you 30,000. You will never rise. You will never move. Listen, if it is God, he will prove himself. Faith. Powerful. Find a believer that has faith and understands faith. Now, faith is not just blindly believing faith is conviction are we together and that conviction comes through understanding you have really understood god and his ways when you know where how you contribute in terms of your partnership your participation listen bible faith does not leave everything to god there is always man's role in that equation please understand this Bible faith will never allow God to just do everything. There is always the participation. And your participation is your believing God and then subscribing to the terms, the conditions that guarantee for that outcome. This is where many believers continue to miss it. Faith is more than just confession. Faith is more than just receiving, as important as they are. They are all equations in that, I mean, variables in that equation of faith. But Bible faith is not Bible faith until you find the condition allocated. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and observe all that I command you this day, that the Lord thy God, now watch this, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Verse 2, it says, And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you. Condition, if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord, if thou shalt pay attention, if you place value on the speakings of God, if you place value on his ways, his intelligence, his methodology, you will not be exalted above all nations just because you want to get there. Bible faith is not just confessing and now from this scripture, you say in the name of Jesus, I'm exalted above all nations. You are correct. But if you stop there, you will live a frustrated Christian life. There is a condition. While you speak, you release that word. But more than that, you have to go back and find out. So what is the voice of God saying? What does it say? The voice of God, the logos of God, his thoughts, his intents. What does he say? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do, 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 not just say, do all that is therein. It says, then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Good success. That means if I'm manifesting faith, then I must begin to understand the ways of God. The ways of God. Every time you are learning the laws of God, every time you're understanding the methodologies of the kingdom, you are in extension manifesting the law of faith. It's proof that you believe God. It's proof that you expect him to work. Are we together? Yes. The law of faith. 
you must believe in God. This life will come with so many things that will threaten you. When David stood before Goliath, he said, You come to me with your bows and your spears, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of heaven, um, uh, the, 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 one, the, the one whom you have defied. He was speaking to Goliath. You have to stand and look at life and say you may look like a mountain, but faith deflates mountains. It is true. It is true. Time will fail me, he says, to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There is nothing in your life and around your life that is new under the sun. It takes faith to subdue. Say in the name of Jesus, by the faith of God at work in me, I subdue every mountain. Don't approach challenges as if it was uniquely. No, no, no. There is nothing special about challenges. It is defeat that should be a surprise. Don't be embarrassed by the mountains that stand before you. Find out the provisions that make for your victory and engage it as though your life depends on it. And let the God of heaven, who is not a man that should lie, come and prove himself in your life. Every testimony here is faith. The equation of faith completed. Trust in God. Please don't doubt God. I know that we live in a sociological context that places very little reverence on God. We make it look like if you cannot see how one plus one is equal to two. One plus one plus God is any answer he says it should be. Any answer. By what standard will you say he failed? If a house is my own, I can choose that the back door becomes the main entrance. It's my house. So you don't say because I entered here, yes, this is my house. You are a visitor. Anywhere I show you that the door is, you follow there. Kai, this God. Hmm. God can decide to say, 2018 plus 2019 should be equal to 2001 to 2017's result together. This is God for you. Ten years in one. Hallelujah. The law of faith. Let's run. Faith is very important. We have dealt with the law of faith here. We have discussed the law of value as one of the kingdom mysteries for an effective Christian life. The law of value. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16, the Bible declares that the gift of a man will make room for him and bring him before great men. This is a very powerful scripture because it does not lie. Sincerely, let me tell you, this is one of the, I, I, I can't use the word, truest scriptures. But this scripture you see, please have a lot of regard for it. The gift of a man truly can make room for him. It didn't say we'll show him where his room is. Until then, there is no space for you. The gift will make room for you. Like a visitor comes to your house and there was no space. And because of your honor for that visitor, the children will come out to sleep in the parlor and you quickly make room. So where there was no space for you, that your gift can come and say, what is going on here? The table of greatness, where is my space? Sorry, there's no space. No, it will shift until it creates a chair for you and a throne. The gift of a man. The gift of a man can make room can take a man out of a life of mediocrity and pain and shame and bring you to a place of greatness. It's very important. Classic um, story is the story of Joseph. Genesis chapter 41, when you read 14 and then from 33 to 46. I don't want to go into it. Forgive me, I'm rushing because we're just, this is a revision series. I'm reminding you that these are the keys of the kingdom. These are the truths we engage. 
if you don't engage this you will fail i tell you sincerely they are not opinions they are not doctrinal perspectives when jesus came he began to mentor the disciples in what we call the beatitudes teaching them the ways of the kingdom it's it's important that we understand the methodologies of god it's not the discourse it's not an invention of one man please understand this J jeremiah 6 i believe verse 16 let's go there and then we'll return here jeremiah 6 16 the bible says to ask for the ancient part it says stand in the ways and see and ask for the old parts wherein is the good way it says when you find it walk therein and ye shall find what rest another word for rest is sabbath the sabbath of a man comes the bible says labor to enter your rest that labor is not a labor in the flesh it's a labor of understanding 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 that there is a belief system there is a construction when you hold the keys of the kingdom they can bring you in experience to your sabbath so two people all saved by god can walk on earth commanding different dimensions of results and the difference is not the love of god for them for the same lord is rich unto all the difference is their understanding psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says have i not said ye are gods and all of you not some of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so your destiny is not just left to god how can i lie sharia whatever will be will be those wise sayings are poisonous are we together the law of value very very powerful you will continue to sweep the floor of life and destiny until your value bails you out to sit with kings your value decide who decides who pursues you it is true and who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward god designed life to operate based on a reward system there's no sentiments to it life operates based on a reward system that means that no matter how bad my background is no matter how bad it was there is a bailout system i can be valuable i can find my way out of every nonsense in life it has nothing to do with who likes you or who does not like you it's a principle backed up by god's own integrity when you discover and you develop problem solving abilities when you become fruitful when you become productive it's impossible to be ignored regardless of tribal affiliation regardless of sentiments regardless of age and gender the world does not have too many people who are valuable please understand this potentially we all are but in experience there are few people per territory you can you can do a random sampling there are few people per territory who are really valuable so it's impossible to be ignored it's like holding bright, bright light in a very dark night how could you be ignored i show you what will take away mediocrity from your life it's impossible to be ignored you may ignore my background that's all right you may not like my persona that's all right but the value i carry then anointed by God, developed and served with excellence, it's impossible to ignore it. And we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you. And I will never settle for less I know there's more that's found in you. There is more. There is more than a weak and a mediocre life. There is more than a life of just getting married, having children, and managing the problems of life until death. 
takes away your life there is more than that there is a life of meaning and glory and beauty he has called us into glory and virtue he has called many sons into glory where your life becomes an influence for his majesty your life becomes an inspiration to a generation more than just food to eat more than a little house here and there i have one house two cars one estate one business a wife my children and that's it that's a mediocre life there's more than that are we together the bible says that you are the light of the world jesus is teaching here now you are the light of the world the salt of the earth it says if the salt has lost its savour its saltiness wherewith shall it be salted it is for no good but to be trampled underfoot by men he says you are the light of the world then he says a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden that's the word you cannot ignore a believer who has refined his ability and my brothers and my sisters when the glory of god comes upon who you are and the works of your hands your life becomes an epistle of unending wonder one wonder connecting to another when people think they have exhausted a dimension here you come like the eagle another page god does not select a few people to be great and a few people to follow and scrounge in mediocrity no it's a very poisonous proposition he desires that all men the bible says revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that we have all been made together unto our god kings or a kingdom of priests kings and priests and he said we not one person we shall reign on earth please believe the word of god it's not a scam believe the word of god it may take time and while that is happening different people can argue about what they think or know about your life but just allow the word of god take you like a lift it will take you to a mountain that you will stand and wonder and all you will see from your life is an effulgence of praise it's called doxazo the flaunting of a king's glory now thanks be to god he says that causes us always to triumph are we together Isaac looked at his son and blessed his son and he said that his smell was like the field that the Lord has blessed. A man's life can become a fragrance that is perceived by a generation. Value. Value. Don't say my family came from this. Nathaniel said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Jesus did not turn and say, ah, Nathaniel, so much. No, no, no. He was right. There was a history to it. But he said, Nathaniel, just because I did this now, you, have, ah, you will see greater things than this. That Nazarene that you laugh at, you will see something out of him. That rejected stone. Listen, there is an advantage being in Christ. There is an advantage that your tribe, there is, there is a limit to the advantage that being a Yoruba person gives you. Being an Igbo person gives you. Being a Northerner gives you. Being a Middle Belt, a South, a Southerner. There is an advantage that being an American citizen, a British citizen, they all have their advantages, but they are still limited. Ah, but now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Do not underestimate the power and the potentials locked up in one who has been a benefactor of the grace of God. now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear otherwise people like us would not have a stake in life but hallelujah ah. you may laugh at my background but watch my future you may laugh at yesterday but not tomorrow between yesterday and tomorrow is the cross and the throne i will not remain at the cross jesus died for only three days he didn't die forever man should not remain at the cross forever if you remain at the cross forever, it's a sign that death has swallowed you up. Are we together? Please shake off that mediocrity from your life. Don't, don't move around like a second class citizen and allow people with their pride in their limitation to bully you out of destiny. You don't have to be arrogant. You don't have to insult anybody. But please have a healthy confidence. You may laugh at me but not the one with me. 
The Bible never said, as far as I'm concerned, I'm successful. He said, with God. Laugh at me if you don't, if I'm alone. Laugh at me because your prophecy will be right. But with God. Renard Bonke, I remember those, those times when he was preaching in just in his crusade. He said, even if you call him a big zero, the bigger the zero, God is the one that is added to the zero. So if I'm five zeros plus one, if I become six zeros plus one, if I become seven zeros, so the bigger the zero, the greater the value when he comes. Let me give you the New Living Translation of that. There is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God. When God wanted to humble the fallen angels, he used clay to make man. You see, the fallen angels were not made from dust. Their material was light. And now God decided to make mud and put his image that they so died for to get in that earthen vessel. And they said, this is not fair. Even Lucifer, that was the light bearer, an effulgence of the light of God did not have the privilege to carry the image of the Christ. The Holy Spirit never came inside any one angel. Never came inside one cherubim. But he made clay and breathed upon that man the breath of life. Please don't just be motivated alone. Be angry. You know, we have these funny ways of looking at people in society. You are not beautiful. You are ugly. You don't speak English well. Don't worry. My result will correct any error in my English. Appa! Don't allow life defeat you like this cheaply. You know, and this is a world of arrogance. Even one minute to a man falling inside a pit, he will act as if he still has control. Let me tell you, the days that will come will reveal a dimension of the glory of the church. It will be impossible. The church will not just be some kind of fanatical people who are, who are close within a religious sect. No, the social economy will see the intelligence of God. Was it not prophesied by prophet Micah that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted above every other mountain and the nations will flow to it they will come and say come let us go to the house of god to the god of jacob for he will teach us his ways he says for from zion out of zion shall proceed the law not into zion out of zion say i'm valuable it's a revelation. Don't give yourself cheap to life. Just because culture, just because your past, just because your failures have concluded about you, shake that off and know that there is a way. Oh, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Mm -mm. While they were discussing the death of Jesus, he had resurrected and was on the throne. Please sit down. The law of value. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. The earth has too many people for you to be ignored. 7.2 billion is a lot of people. A territory can ignore you but not the entire earth. Hmm. We will all be great. And the greatest part is we will all know ourselves. It's true. You will not be great just by intention. There is a ladder that knowledge provides. One step after another, we will climb until the pride of man against the ways of God will be revealed through our manifestation. It will be very clear that any man that ignored God will pay the price generationally speaking. We want to correct a perception that has been gotten about God. God is not a nuisance to civilization. And being a child of God does not mean that you become a failure in life. Listen, you must understand this. It may take time. Agreed, your path may be unconventional. But watch the beauty and glory that comes out of you. 
Next law. We're discussing the spiritual laws and the mysteries that bring us to points of power. There are mysteries in the kingdom. These are the keys. Please understand this. Please understand this. The next key that I want to teach us is what I call, you know it, the mystery of exemption. Huh. That there is a key allocated by which the saints can exempt themselves. The first time we see exemption in scripture, officially, was when the angel of death was about to pass over the entire land of Goshen and even in Egypt. They were asked to bring a strategy and it was a strategy of the blood on their lintel. Are we together? And that when the angel of death saw the blood, he would pass over. That is a revelation that everything should not meet you and destroy you. Passing over is a possibility in this kingdom. The Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side. He said none shall come nigh thy dwelling but only with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked. Let me tell you, the part of scripture you choose to believe is the part that works for you. Forget about your current result. Just focus on believing it. Sometimes when you believe certain things, at the point of believing, your results will negate it, but just continue. Remember the things that are seen are temporal. It is the things that are unseen. Superimpose your possibilities. Your life. Don't sit down and say, now that I'm talking, am I not broke? Mm -mm. For our light afflictions, the Bible says, which is but for a moment. It says, it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, meaning a possibility exists for them to change. Exemption. Man can be exempted. And I've shared with us that there are three keys, basically. Number one is the mystery of praise. That praise is a deep mystery that can exempt men. Praise. Praise. I'm just touching it. We're not going into all of the details. Praise. One of the, the, the mysteries of exemption. Requests that should not be granted are granted. It was a young lady who danced before Herod. Danced before Herod until a prophet's head went. He prophesied, but a lady danced until a king lost his mind and said, What do you want? And was willing to allow a small girl to ruin his kingdom. And she advised her wicked mother, who said the head of John the Baptist and the head of John the Baptist went there are things that should not happen that you can make happen and there are things that should happen that you can stop from happening praise when you praise God it's called perfected praise praise that is intentional Praise is a weapon of judgment. It's a weapon of warfare. Let the high praise of God be upon their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon their kings and to bind their nobles with the fetters of iron. It says that to execute upon them the judgment written, this inheritance, this blessing has the saints. Let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, when you take out time to praise God, you can praise tragedy out of your life. You can praise limitation out of your life. You've had many people's testimonies here. They love themselves and sing and dance like fools. The songs of Miriam, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He said the horses and his rider, not the horse alone. You are not safe if the rider is still alive. The horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Cheap victories through praise. It was in the days of Jehoshaphat when three nations came together to throw them. And he said, look, this one is not, you find it in Second Chronicles chapter 20. There's no time to read everything. 
And they raised their voices and began to sing. You are good and your mercy endures forever. And there was fight in the camp of the enemy. They began to kill one another. And the last person helped kill his brother. Men were going for war and they went with gold and silver. And when the army came, they found prepared blessings. Please do not underestimate the power of praise with understanding. You can dance your way out of tears. You will look stupid until the results justify you. You can sing and shout. Praise is very powerful. It's not a psychological way to motivate yourself. No. Are we together? Praise. You exempt yourself through praise. You have to know this. I've also taught you that one of the ways that you can exempt yourself is through the mystery of sacrifice. Sacrifice is very powerful. Psalms 50 and verse 5. I'm just doing a quick recap. We have all these teachings. You can go and listen to them. Gather unto me, my saints, the Bible declares, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, by sacrifice, by sacrifice. There are covenants that you can enter not even knowing it's a covenant you entered. Sacrifice. The Bible says that Solomon sacrificed a thousand bond offerings. And that night, not the next day, that same night, the Lord came to him and said, Solomon, ask what he will. And then he asked, not for the life of his enemy, but for wisdom to govern the people. And he said, you did not ask for the life of your enemy, nor riches, nor this. Because of that, I will give you an understanding heart, he said. And with it, I will give you riches, I will give you wealth and honor, and so on and so forth. Sacrifice is powerful. Unfortunately, I know that it has been abused, you know, especially by women of God, try to manipulate people to just get a lot of money but just because something was was abused the word abuse comes from two words abnormal use that means when you take the use out of its its boundary of relevance just because something has been abused does not mean you throw away the baby and the bath water sacrifice is powerful you can sow your way out of realms you can sow your way into realms sacrifice that is done with understanding not manipulation not coercion as a testimony one time when when we started koinonia i think the f the first year or so we're just about a year or so i remember one time the beginning of that year the lord gave an instruction to carry everything literally everything zero dot zero zero carry everything and so and I heard it, I knew it was God. I said, Lord, thank you for an opportunity for lifting. Not thank you for being a robber. God does not rob. As we carried that seed and sowed in seven days, seven days, God did a miracle that is only in heaven we all know what God did. But it's a, it's a mother of miracles to this ministry, even financially. Greed is your partnership with failure. When you are greedy, you have entered into an intentional alliance with failure and struggle. Please hear what I'm saying. This is true. Greed is a man's partnership with failure to keep that man in that realm. You can pray your way. You can give your way, sow your way, and then invoke the mercy of God and so on and so forth. Let me talk about two more and we'll pray. Oh dear. But I hope you are getting these things. Because let me tell you, if you understand these principles that I show you, your life will become an unending wonder. It's true. It's not a lie. They are not opinions. Hallelujah. The next law spiritual law 
the irrefutable ministry of destiny help us destiny help us destiny help us destiny help us these are some of the ways of the kingdom that you must learn passionately the irrefutable ministry of destiny help us everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships please understand this everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships we are relational beings in fact the faith work starts with a relationship a relationship with jesus in an experience that we know to be the new birth relationships matter in this life please listen when you master relationships you will tame life like a dog i wish i had the time but let's look at just one scripture second samuel chapter 9 it's a long reading i don't know if we can look at it second samuel chapter 9 we'll start from verse 1 destiny help us there is there is a teaching and david said ah, i answer amen for this for even myself and david said is there yet any that is left in the house of saul that i may show him kindness for whose sake not for his sake for jonah because you are related to jonathan i want to change your life next verse and there was in the house of one saul a servant whose name was ziba and they went and called unto David. They called him unto David. And the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is here. We're reading, please. Go ahead. And the king said, Is there not any in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And so on and so forth. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son. But this son is lame on his feet. Is a son, but it's a son that cannot help himself. Next verse. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And he said, Behold, he is in Laudeba, and so on and so forth. Verse 5. Let's hurry up. I just want us to get the, the central message. And the, and the king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, and the son of Amiel from Laudeba. 6. Now when Mephibosheth, ah, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David. He fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he said, Behold thy servant. Seven. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show thee kindness. Not the spirit of God. Man can show man kindness. A man can decide to use his influence and change your life. Please understand what I teach you. Every blessing comes from God through men to men. There is no blessing that comes from God to men. No, it comes from God through men to men. Every good thing lives from Satan through men to men or from men. For Jonathan, thy father's sake, and I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table. How long? If he ate only one day, it will be painful. It's painful to enter some realms and go out. He says continually. 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 And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a what? A dead dog as I am. Ah! Water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Yeah, none like you. Water you turn, say. Water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. We are talking the God of heaven here. My God is greater, my God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Please sit down. A 
man is calling himself a dog, you should even be afraid of relating with such a man. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, when you find your destiny helper, not a man who decides to help you, sit down, I will tell you who they are. Glorious is the destiny of the man when you find a man that was anointed and authorized to help you. Destiny helpers are not well-wishers. No. Destiny helpers are not kind people. No. It's a ministry to you. It's God's time redemption system. I told you there are systems of advantage in this kingdom. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Verse 9. We are reading to 11. Let's hurry up, please. And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, Please listen. I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained unto Saul and to his house. Restoration by one encounter. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Prophesy. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Therefore, and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. Now listen. And thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son shall eat bread all way at my table. And now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Didn't the king see his sons? Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Yet they sent him, although he had sons, they said, go and run an errand for a boy who a midwife threw by mistake and crippled his destiny. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. There is a system of advantage. I may be limited. But in this kingdom, there are keys. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Listen. And then Ziba. Why will the Bible tell us Ziba had 15 sons? That means when a man is not your destiny helper, he will watch you like this and you see him. Every destiny helper has his own children. He has his own relatives. He did not even say, Ziba, take two of your sons. Let me help you while I help this guy every disadvantage you don't take blemish before the king did you not read malachi you call me a king why do you bring me animals with blemish the guy already called himself a dog the king said it doesn't matter may you find the man anointed by god to lift you please hear what i'm saying you can be born again and not leave the potentials that are encapsulated in this kingdom. Please sit down. We'll find somewhere to pray. Mephibosheth. There are four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run it quickly in two minutes. There is a teaching. Please get it. Number one, they are called divine connectors. Divine connectors don't have the power to help you, but they know who can help you. An example is the little slave girl. The Bible talks about Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a valiant man in his battles, but he was leprous. As valiant as he was, he could not meet Elijah, but there was a little girl who connected him. The young man cannot give you a job, but he knows which job is, is, on, is on application right now. The young man does not have the power to write you a check. 
but he knows how to connect to someone who honors your vision divine connectors number two the second kind of destiny helpers are called men of access these ones are people who have influence they are gatekeepers of industries Who's, who speaks at the gates about you matters see let me tell you there is this foolishness among believers that they believe that just because God let me tell you this sincerely please hear me not every enemy is castable just think about what I'm saying there are enemies that are gatekeepers and their position is honored even by God you cannot cast them when God wants you to pass through that gate he will make them to show you favor the Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord he makes even his enemies there are gatekeepers a Cyrus can reject you he does not honor God but you are rejected how do you cast Caesar how do you cast Herod so he granted favor and when Joseph of Arimathea requested for the body of Jesus they allowed it not every man you can just pray and say let him leave that place let me tell you there are men that would not go there because their stewardship is a covenant they are not even there because of what they did they are sitting on another covenant that God's integrity must protect although they are unbelievers Ishmael today remains there to the heart of God in spite of his pungency against the gospel because he will always remember Abraham my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone from my mouth in a desert land yet they are prosperous because God is a covenant keeping God so when you see people sitting down and you are praying and praying and they are not living find out their grandfather who loved God arranged something for them with God forget that they are rebelling while they are there their children will pay for it but for that time no your prayer meets a covenant that God has vowed to honor and you'll find out that you are praying spiritual prayers that are not producing results what I tell you is called spiritual intelligence it's true. these are the kinds that you need favor influence did you not notice that God did not have to remove Pharaoh for Joseph he just caused Pharaoh to love Joseph notice that all through the lifetime of that Pharaoh they were allowed to serve their God and Pharaoh gave him he, he, the wife of the priest Potiphar, the priest of On, as a wife to a man who's another God somewhere and he still gave him as a wife and in, in the land of Goshen the people can't, it was when there was another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph that was when their oppression started so even in a land that does not seem to favor you governmentally you can reign favor men of access please don't reject men of access in your life it's not simplicity you will be punished again and again for that ignorance hallelujah number three the third category of destiny helpers are called gifted people gifted people these are people who are an asset to you every pastor needs these people every father needs these people they are the people that make work easy they are the errands and the horse you need gifted people they must be sent by god you will see a big church of five thousand people and only one person is trying to learn how to play the keyboard you need to cry for gifted people are we together gifted people I have seen personally precious great anointed men and women of God but no support systems no gifted people there are families that don't have gifted people every house help is a thief every house help is a robber everybody is a I mean you there has to be a skilled person gifted people I'm saying this so that when you are praying you can ask in prayer Lord send me gifted people make my life easy You have a business because of scarcity you you hire a receptionist who continues to drive good people from your life 
Hello, is this so, 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 so person's office? Why are you here? Please, if you are, don't you know who gave you the address? And person, I'm sorry. And he leaves. You are inside there doing CEO and your company is failing. You need to pray for gifted people. No man exists as an island. Gifted. I pray this prayer all the time. And I tell you sincerely and I, 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 I stand broken before God to appreciate him for giving me and giving this ministry the treasure of gifted people. The workers in this ministry are exceptionally gifted people has saved me the stress of any other thing i focus on the ministry of prayer and the word please you need gifted people in your life otherwise life will be hard you can't do everything by yourself hallelujah gifted people the day your wife is giving birth that's the day the quack doctor is on duty you, you see what is happening the day your child is sick that's the day your serious doctor wants to give an injection and he experiments around your child to make him like Mephibosheth. The midwife that threw Mephibosheth, she was called a midwife. What happened that she threw the guy down? Do you know the kind of fall you have to throw a child to break the legs and scatter the child? Lord, send me gifted people in the name of Jesus Christ. And the last of all, very quickly, they are called burden bearers. The last of the destiny helpers are called burden bearers. During the, your down times in life, you must pray that God will send you people who don't love you because of the throne. They love you because of who you are. The flat tree of success can kill. People can clap when there is a crown on your head. But when you are at the cross, you will need burden bearers. And Jesus was on his way to Golgotha, the Bible records. And he was, he was bleeding and that he was losing blood and was about to die. He would have died there. And if he died there, there would be a problem. Because he needed to die a curse. Not just to die a man. Curse is the man that hangs upon the tree, he says. That the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. That we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. So if he died on the way, that's not redemption. That's obituary. And then they called on a burden bearer called Simon of Cyrene. The black man, the nigger. And he, the guy gladly carried the cross. Let me tell you, I pray that you will find people in your life that even when you stand like David in the cave of Adullam, the Bible says mighty men, they came to David. They saw him hiding and they said, you will become our king. It's not everybody that is looking for results. There are people who will stay with you. As the landlord is driving you, they will stand there and say, no, I will not run away. Men are selfish by design. Please, every leader, hear me. You need to trust God for the grace for real burden bearers. Men and women who can cry with you. They can say Hosanna, but when you're on your way to the cross, you will only see Mary and John there. Burden bearers. There are men of God when they are, we start building projects, everybody just runs away. When the building is completed, people come and dance again to acknowledge God. Burden bearers. Even the disciples ran away. But there was a woman who said, let me risk my life. I'm on my way to the tomb to go and purify his body. I hope you know that was why she went. She carried to go and purify his body. What if she died on the way? A burden bearer will be like Ruth to Naomi. Your God will be my God. And your people will be my people. Many people, when they are in their dark days, they never find helpers. Who will not celebrate with you when things are going well? But you must pray for burden bearers. There is an attack on the church and someone is standing to say, Pastor, I love you. I will stand by you all the way. Are we together? I'm brother, steal from your house. And someone comes and says, is there food 
for the next two weeks i will be cooking for you don't tell anybody i have to stay here i hear you want to buy back another car please my salary of two months is yours don't say there are no people like that there are real burden bearers it takes prayer and spiritual understanding listen these are the forces that work in the life of others and while you are seeing these things happen there are burden bearers again i thank god for the privilege you know many men of god for many men of god their greatest fear in fact many successful people their greatest fear is whether they will have people stand by them when things go bad I tell you God has taken that fear out of my life God has given me not only trusted people not only gifted people not everybody old but there are people God has put in my life that I know if they put a gun today they will stand and take that bullet Lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why i will lift up my voice you've taken the pain and the sorrow away you've given me peace on the night there's no need to cry cause you're always with me you're my father my everything listen you must pray to God and cry that there be burden bearers will look at your wound listen listen Please sit down. We'll pray shortly. Listen. The Bible talks. Jesus himself was teaching. And Jesus spoke about a man. And robbers were laid that man. Are we together? And he was on the... A priest came. And a priest saw him and left going to church. A Pharisee came and left him. But there was a man called Good Samaritan. No name. Good Samaritan. He was identified by where he was coming from, his territory, and his character. Good Samaritan. And the man sat down. He bandaged this man, took him to a private inn to keep him, and said, I will take care of him. I'm about to go and do something. When I come back, whatever the cost is, that's a burden bearer. That's not an advisor. There are people who will come and see your child your daughter your son and look at things work as ah, what is this you mean he has been writing work for five years i will conduct a personal tutorial when you see a burden bearer you will think they charm them they will carry your own load on their own head you are planning for marriage and you find a burden bearer you have entered the sabbath the person may not be a millionaire he will be collecting 100,000 and depositing 60,000. Say, this is my contribution. There are real burden bearers. Not everyone on earth is wicked. You have just been meeting wicked people because you have been allowing life choose for you. You select your possibilities in prayer. This ministry, by the grace of God, has been privileged to have burden bearers. Men and women who arise by the Spirit financial burden bearers credibility burden bearers there are people today across several nations of the world some of them are listening to me right now they have taken it as a mandate but i've never met them taking it as a mandate to ensure that the teachings that come from this ministry get to the ends of the earth there are all kinds of social media platforms that is all they do as if god did not call them themselves burden bearers It is painful to be alone it is painful to be alone there are many parents today who have raised all kinds of children they had just five or six of their own children 
but they raise up to 50 children of other people and these people in old age will be in the hospital are we together now looking for one million for a treatment and all those 40 people they raised not one person can stand up to be responsible to say no i remember history i will never allow mama die like this some of them will have private hospitals some of them will have schools you need a burden bearer in your life a burden bearer in your life i've had the privilege by the grace of god in my own capacity to be a burden bearer to certain people and i'm happy doing it a burden bearer will go all out to turn your cry into weeping that's his assignment to insist till you laugh why are you about to go away so i'm in 200 level my father just died my mother just died they don't sit down and say are you from the same village that's not a burden bearer is your what was your father did he know my father mm. i stand and i say this come every semester receive this school fees for give me your account number I will be putting 10 10 000 until you graduate and when you are about to graduate let me know so that i will ensure that you have a job now you have a job you are doing well sir this is the wife i want to marry oh really do you have an auditorium we are trusting god because how much do you have hundred thousand take one million go and pay for an auditorium that's a burden bearer there are churches that have had the privilege of burden bearers that's why they don't announce we have a project of you know God designed men to be burden bearers this crying on stage for money every week no a real burden bearer will sit down and find needs why is this pastor shoe removing that shoe would the pastor would never wear that shoe again had this shoe no no it was embarrassing next time you go and buy ah, we notice that this child was crying and nobody could buy bobo next week there's a carton of bobo for children that's a burden bearer and may you be a burden bearer too because it it is wicked for you to want a burden bearer in your life and not want to be that for another you have to sow that seed of being a burden bearer may your wife be your burden bearer husband and may your husband may, may what's the next one now may your husband be a burden bearer wife be, because listen let me tell you if your spouse is not a burden bearer you will see what will happen the day you are in the hospital you've seen these things happen some persons are in the hospital some people are selling their property hoping that they will die and then they later come and leave it's, it's when they are alive they now find out that half of the estate had gone in expectation that you would die is that a spouse this is why we will continue by the spirit of god listen to me let me just digress for 10 seconds this is why we will continue to guide people you know sometimes people make very very poor marital choices carelessly these are the things to think about father is this person a burden bearer not for now for the days that come there are women whose husbands are confined on the wheelchair and you will see them celebrating their birthday 60 years with the man he can't talk he can't walk yet she's laughing they say say something about your husband say even if we return in this life i want him to still be my husband that's a burden bearer my generation hear me open your eyes and your spirit and your understanding and not make a catastrophic mistake that would destroy your life burden bearers in my life i have seen this there are men of god who have taken it upon themselves to ensure that every platform that can afford me the opportunity to teach the ways of the kingdom is there i am amazed at the invitations that continue to come from around the world and you will hear that one pastor went and he took his time and sat and said look this and that and that and burden bearers 
the Lord gave the word. He said, great is the company of them that published it. If you don't have a burden bearer, you will pay for everything. The one who will help you drive your car, you will pay. The one who will help you cook, you will pay. The one who will help your child to not cry in church, you will pay because they are not burden bearers. Naomi told Ruth, you can go. I'm an old woman. Don't worry. At least my sons are dead. I can't leave you. Please just go. Live your life. Leave this old woman. And Ruth said, no way. No way. Mama, I'm not going anywhere. That means even if my future is ruined, let it be at the instance of our relationship. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Our time is gone. Can you spare me five minutes to talk on the law of honor? Will I end without teaching this? As you are agreeing to give me five minutes, it also means you are agreeing that if you don't have a legitimate reason to see me, you will go home after the grace. Make him my... Make him my, 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 sit down this spiritual mystery second only to the law of encounter is the greatest truth I have found the law of honor the mystery behind the sudden rising of people like a charm a man just evaporates and you don't see him again and the only place you find him is above. Honor. What is honor? Honor is the discerning. Please listen. Five minutes and we're done. Honor is the discerning. Honor is the celebrating. And then if need be, honor is the rewarding of a man for their uniqueness. And their usefulness the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of a man please help him up, for their uniqueness honor is the number one reason for the sudden rise of people please if you can I recommend that you listen to my teaching that I did at the King's Court RCCG the King's Court listen to it I spoke on the book of Esther the book of Esther starts in a very interesting way please lend me five minutes we're still at that the Bible starts by flaunting the glory of a man a king called Ahasuerus the Bible says that he was a king over 127 provinces to tell us the extent of his his might and then the bible tells us about a woman called vashti are we together so the next scene starts with the dishonor of a woman the king calls for vashti to come to come and you know show herself as it was in ancient customs before his friends and vashti refused when she refused, the king, being a very good man, he kept quiet with the issue. But then the advisors of the king said, uh, 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 uh. This woman is in a position where she's a model to every woman. If you permit this dishonor, our wives and our women will start the same thing too. Do something about it. And Vashti is banished. Are we together? That means everything was in place in a palace. The throne is still there. The treasures are still there, but dishonor is about to divide the kingdom into two. Everything still in place. Intelligence is there. 
the security there a man is there but one woman's dishonor is about to bring conflict and tear down 127 provinces and then the king dismisses the wife there is no record of Vashti saying sorry there is no record of Vashti saying an audience with the king I apologize no to hell with your palace and she leaves scene 3 a call is made for all of the young virgins around the territory and then in a place called Shushan are we together now the little niece of a gatekeeper called Mordecai is fetched and brought before the king honor she honored the man and she came honor and favor works peri pursue there may not be time to talk about favor but if you if you if you practice honor automatically you will find favor favor is the reward for honor are we together so when she came there the bible says in esther chapter 2 please give us verse 15 and then we'll go to verse 17 that there was a grace for favor that was upon her now when the turn of esther came and so on and so forth she went to Haggai, required from him the last sentence and esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her favor is a grace that works with sight when the, when the grace for favor is upon you only a blind man will ignore blessing you provided there is a man that has the eye that can see they are compelled to bless you verse 17 and the king loved esther above all the women she was not alone but the king loved esther and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so other virgins obtained favor too but has surpassed them so that he set a royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti are we together and then when you read on you will find out that a lot began to happen and she declared a fast because of the threat of her man his plot to destroy the people of God and she went to the king and he lifted the golden censer the scepter and invited and said what should i do a wise woman look at honor honor is a weapon in that in the book of esther there is no priest in the book of esther there is no prophet in the book of esther there is no apostle in the book of esther there is no war there is only a woman but she defeated everybody with a tool and a weapon called honor she honored her man to his grave honor is a weapon it not only lifts it can kill a wise a foolish woman would have told the king and said king her man wants to destroy us will you watch your beautiful bride go see that but a wise woman when he gave her an opportunity her honor she discerned his mood and she said oh king i want to give you what the first wife didn't give you it was her not honoring you that took her out of the place grant me the opportunity to present a banquet and the king said finally i find a woman who understands that with all humility i am king over 127 provinces talk about my province first before my request don't before your don't come before me and request talk about the province don't ignore the achievement it's a formula for attracting the attention of great men don't come before a great man and say i'm broke no are you not aware his company is doing well you start like esther the province and the palace and his interest then your needs come later so when you go to this king called your father when you stand it is hallowed be your name then thy kingdom come then your will O king be done on earth then when you are done then give us this day our daily it's a formula the king's interest first before your needs so Esther prepares a banquet and then notice 
she also requested please let her man also come when you fight a great man's friend too soon even if he's your enemy you will pay for it friendship is not built in one day you will not fight it emotionally her man had done many good things for the king for one woman's plea to make him destroy the man no she prepared the banquet the king liked it he said do it again he said with all pleasure my king honor remember somebody is dying no but honor is the one killing the person and then another banquet is prepared and then the bible says she prepared a feast called the feast of wine that was where the whole thing came the feast of wine when the king drank wine and was happy he now said okay what is it and he said oh king i have a plea say it wine you wait until wine comes there is one who is threatening your queen and threatening your people who is that that her man look at a wise king he didn't comment he stood up and went to his garden went around his lounge and was just thinking and while he was thinking you see but when when it's time up for your enemy anything will be problem the man went to the king, the queen to kneel down you know how you kneel down and just say kill me here the king now ah, you are even trying to rape my wife on top that's the end of it couldn't he beg from a distance he now came and knelt down close to the queen he, he's just doom and listen the moment that happened watch this Haman went back to his wife before that time he went back to the wife and complained about what happened and the wife said who is this person he said Esther he said a Jew you are finished you are fighting a covenant not a woman you are finished her man didn't you select who to fight not everybody is fightable you went to go and fight a covenant and that was the end of it her man is hung on that same gallow Mordecai occupies her man's position Esther occupies Vashti's position so who said God cannot replace men who said God cannot lift Please hear me honor is powerful dishonor is dangerous there is only one reason why men fail in life carry this message dishonor to God dishonor to men dishonor to principles one more time dishonor to God dishonor to men and dishonor to principles this is why people fail in life every time I have the privilege of going to any church or ministry to minister I will never never dishonor the man of God dishonor their protocol dishonor their system I will walk within what is provided it's called honor it's not weakness honor your father and your mother that your days may be long I tell you why many young people are dying like chickens dishonor 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 the law of honor has changed my life the law of honor has lifted me lifted this great ministry you can earn a living practicing honor honor is a stream of income when they say mention your streams of income don't just mention real estate and shop and poultry say honor a wise man will clap for you honor is powerful it can change your life in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters honor is powerful I continue to walk this law like a chess and you walk this law there is no power in existence I don't just use the precious workers in this ministry I truly love them and I honor them 
we prepare a bus to carry you after service as a way a token of honor honor is very powerful let me tell you this when God makes men like you no matter what is done a, within the context of that generation you have entered your Sabbath it is not enough for God to like you alone the men he uses must like you God can tell Pastor Femi come Pastor Femi I'm rounding up God can tell Pastor Femi to bless me he can reject that instruction while he's struggling with obedience I'm suffering I will be seen in the vision that my testimony has landed but it will remain in the dream God agreed a man disagreed I'm paying the price and the key will be honor honor is what we continue to teach in this ministry please hear me you are part of this spiritual family one of the signature traits of your life must be honor don't talk to people anyhow you see elderly people you insult everybody huh no an elderly woman is carrying something mark please can i help you oh i'm a man of god so what demonstrate the fact that you are called by your intelligence don't dishonor our children you see my children here even if I'm not going to see anybody on the line, I must see these children. Nobody fights these more children and have me laugh at them. No. I will hug and they should jump on me and rumple me with their cloth. No problem. If we don't honor them, our future is dead. Honor is powerful. You see a wealthy man and he said, these people are just lucky. All these people. How can a young man live? If not, uh, I hear your father was this and that. You see, dishonor is why many people are poor and broke. They see every rich man and just think he was dash, he was luck. No. Every successful man, especially a successful young man. You no know, one time we were traveling somewhere and I sat close to someone and I was sleeping. It was so bad. You know this kind of sleep? You are going like this all around because you are tired. And then, you know, the person was trying to, ah, you're a young man. What kind of sleep is this? I just looked at him and I nodded my head. I said, you see, this is the kind of thing you are talking about. You are not asking why I'm seated where you are seated at my age. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not, I don't mean to be sarcastic. I don't mean to be sarcastic. The first question is, how did you get here? Listen, please don't dishonor anybody. You have a job. And someone does not have a job. The person who does not have a job, you can honor your way. I've taught it commanding result. Listen to it. One day, get up in the morning and polish the shoe of the one who has gotten a job. Don't say it's my younger brother, it's my younger sister, it's my when I was in, in, in SS3, uh, um, uh, SS it was all those, all those superstitious, trado African approach to life. You, you, you will be punished again and again. I have a great deal of respect for people who honor me sincerely. If you, if you if you trivialize what I represent, I will not fight you, but I will never prophesy to you. You will not be, you will not be close. You will not be around my life again because I'm going to waste my time. I don't love, I don't hate you. I will not do that. I will never dishonor or despise any man called young or old. No, I honor all men. Beware of people who have mastered the art of trivializing what you represent. They may be sincere, but they are dangerous to your growth. Not to flatter you. But please, if you have 127 provinces, it is not a bad thing to have a feast. Oh, Ahasuerus. 127 provinces is not a kiosk. Let us learn to practice honor. Some of you need to go back and appreciate your parents. Your father is a prof. Your mother is a prof. You are there sweeping the ground in life. You can say, Daddy, Mommy, please. Whatever I have done, whatever needs to come on my head how much is chicken that you cannot buy and prepare i'm telling you this there are parents who never went to school but they raised 10 children not one of them is an armed robber you think it's just there is a grace there one child is about to kill you go and meet them 
buy something they like and say please place something on my destiny when I was about to start ministry I met my father and my mother and I told them I said I told my mother I said you are a pastor's daughter your father was a pioneer my grandfather was the first cooking president the first cooking president and is that pioneer grace I want I knelt down when you are too big to honor you are too big to receive adaptation is proof of honor great people are very difficult people don't want people to lift you at your terms that is pride when you want someone to lift you adaptation is proof of honor there are fathers of faith today that want to invite me and you know sometimes our precious fathers respectfully speaking they also don't know the schedule but I've helped the protocol to see just be open be open I will see how I will adjust anything not that you stand and say I'm apostle Joshua Selman and crash down honor is powerful you are the one who loses when you dishonor men we have to stop here teach your children to honor don't see a stranger and come and slap him you spank the child and, and, and prophesy to the child and say I did not give birth to this in the name of Jesus Christ you must change you must become like your father pamper your child to have something some produce something that would destroy you there are people about to start ministry and will meet everybody like a colleague they are failing they don't they don't have the influence and the credibility and they will not listen they come to everybody ah, i'm just one of those i hear you are the femi abi the, the femi pastor femi sorry you see already even if he prays for you i assure you even if you fall down you didn't get anything yes falling down has never been the requirement for reception it is honor the door you dishonor closes towards you I never find a man that carries something I need and I will keep quiet with it no one day God will give you an opportunity to see how I honor the fathers you will be surprised it's just that honor at that level always happens in the secret I had the privilege to pray two weeks ago at Papa Ia Deboe's prayer room. I was granted the opportunity and the tour, and I said, Please grant me the grace. I said, What is there? Every prayer room, what is it? Is it a shrine? You, you see this kind of thinking. You, every result has mysteries that support it. When I laid down, I prayed. One of the things I told God is, Lord, I honor this our servant. You have made him a voice. A few years ago, he went to. David Yongicho for prayers for that church growth grace. A few years later, Yongicho called him to come and pray for him. Ah. I made sure that I treated every staff there. The staff were the apostle, you are the apostle, pray for me. I said, No, I know that I will pray for you, but. I came here to carry a grace. Oh no. The person seated next to you is carrying a grace that you may not, you may need but don't have. Are we together? Yes. The gentleman may not have money but he has character. He's a grace and it's transferable. The person seated next to you, no matter what happens, there is a covenant of supplies. Quarter to shame, help must rise from somewhere. You think it's not an issue to honor? Some of our mothers and fathers seated here, the kind of graces and covenants that operate on their lives. They can just look at you and say, bless you, and that's it. And many of our proud generation of young people who do not understand honor is why we continue to pay for it. We never rise, we never shine, and our light never comes. Please rise up on your feet. I apologize for taking our time. Hold hands with someone. I'm going to pray. These are the ways of the kingdom.
Just one prayer and we are done tonight. I apologize. Our time is up. I don't know which of these laws I have shared with you. I don't know which of these mysteries. Please hear me. I don't know which of these spiritual mysteries you have compromised on. But it's time to cry to God. I have said, there are many of them. This is a revision. Just come hold him. Please help him so that he which of these mysteries that you need to know which one am i missing don't say things are not working in my life nothing works till you engage it there has to be something you are missing maybe it is dishonor maybe you are not putting your faith to work are we together maybe your mind you are trying to acquire things in your life that has not come by growth please whatever category lift up your voice in two minutes let's cry to god we came to church tonight. Church is a place of transformation. The Lord has declared by His Spirit that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. My life is changing. Prophesy to yourself. I'm rising by the Spirit, by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. One minute and we're done. Outside, pray. Online, please pray. The keys of the kingdom, the mysteries by which we reign, enforce us of divine possibilities upon the life of a man. Hallelujah. Father, we desire to bear fruit. We love you and we want to attain unto that height, that image, that stature. We want to be a people very spiritual. We want to be a people very transformed. We want to not only be ambassadors of the kingdom, but we also seek to be agents of national transformation. That our lives will not be a nuisance to civilization. Our lives will not be a nuisance to any society we want to be prosperous we contend for kingdom influence we want to walk in superior dimensions of the gift of the spirit quicken our understanding oh god you have brought us through this revision again to upgrade our lives to insist that we get what works i pray that you break every stony heart in the name of jesus christ give us a heart of flesh give us a heart that is compliant in the mighty name of jesus christ father we decree and declare that we meditate on these things we give ourselves wholly to them and we declare that our profiting will appear unto all everyone who has come under this grace and this influence tonight is blessed in the name of jesus we thank you we thank you and we bless you in Jesus name I pray amen and amen now very quickly our time is up again I, I sincerely apologize um, you are here please listen I want to make the altar call in one minute you are here and listening to me teach the Holy Spirit began to speak to you about the need to completely surrender your heart to Jesus you are here inside outside overflows and online whatever nation of the world or you are here please let's minimize movement you are here and you are saying apostle i love jesus but at one point or the other my life has gone haywire and i need restoration please we have just one minute for you if you are in that category inside outside wherever you will need to run if you have to come please i'd like you to rush and come stand here let me have the honor of praying for you
and that from the depth of my heart. God bless you. Don't wait for anyone to come win that war tonight. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, celebrate them. They are coming everywhere from inside and from outside. God is giving you a new beginning. The Bible declares that whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Celebrate those who are coming from outside. This is a family. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's like coming to receive an award. You are not coming to a funeral. Jesus is calling you. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. Join them, please, quickly. I'm not sure. I just know that I love the things of God, but I cannot remember making a commitment for Jesus. Please join them quickly. We have a few seconds. If you're coming from outside, please rush. You're coming from outside, please rush. Whoever comes to him, the Bible declares that he will in no way wise cast away. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I honor every one of you for um, the courage to come. It takes a lot of courage. Aside from the convicting power of the spirit, it also, there is a psychology to it. It takes a lot of courage. I salute you for winning this war. Please lift your right hand if you will. And I want you to say this after me from the depth of your heart. You're not just reciting a poem. Jesus is here. If you want to join them, please come quickly while they pray. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you. And I believe in you that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I receive your life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. From tonight and forever, I am a child of God. I am saved. I move upward and I move forward only. Please keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you. I stretch my hands over these ones and I present to you the ones you died for. It's an honor to lead these precious people you have so loved before your throne and to present them to you. I pray that the grace that keeps will keep you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the Spirit of the Lord that your sins are forgiven. The Lord gives you a new beginning in the name of Jesus Christ. You go from strength to strength and from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate everyone.